A healthy John Wall and Kawhi Leonard for the Clippers, along with a presumably healthy Anthony Davis for the Lakers, has the LA teams headlining the best big threes in the association entering 2022-23. But the Dubs were practically undefeated in 2022 with their dominant trio, so you can't forget about the reigning champion Golden State Warriors, who are led by a revolutionary backcourt with the Splash Brothers and an all-time great backside defender in the versatile Draymond Green. Basketball's a superstar-driven sport, so the value of an NBA team's top three weapons is often reflective of the success they may or may not have. As you're going to find out, if you look closely enough at the talent in today's game, elite trios are easier to find than you might have presumed. But the question you're begging to know is who owns the best top three options among all 30 teams? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, make sure you go follow at Hoops on Instagram for NBA edits. I'd greatly appreciate it. Link is down below in the description. Also, please leave a thumbs up on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Last but definitely not least, help my channel on the journey to 100k by hitting the subscribe button. The content is all written, recorded, and edited by one man, that being myself, so thank you kindly for your support. Number 10, Siakam, Van Vliet, and Barnes. The Raptors trio could debatably include OG Ananobi, but the trajectory of 2022's ROY Scotty Barnes is why the soon-to-be sophomore is included in this big three, representing the six. This may sound like an overhyping, but Barnes has a shot to beat Giannis Adetokounmpo with a jump shot. After being the number four overall pick in 2021's draft, Scotty joined a Raptor team with just 27 wins in the prior 2021 season. Barnes helped improve the Raps' win total to 48 in 2122. Scotty's unselfish yet energetic mindset perfectly meshes with his lockdown perimeter defense and point guard esque passing. In terms of his finishing at the hoop, that's what mostly resembles the Greek freak, as Barnes can take off from around the foul line after exploding to the basket with long strides. Put the developing Barnes next to two perennial 20 point per game scores and crucial pieces in Toronto's 2019 title run, and the Raptors' first three options are solid. Number nine, Jokic, Murray, and Porter Jr. After finishing as the number six seed and getting eliminated in five by the eventual championship winning Golden State Warriors, we've all seemed to forget that the Denver Nuggets made the conference finals back in the bubble on the back of Kitchener, Ontario native Jamal Murray. Over 19 playoff games back in 2020, Murray scored 504 points in total, which was the third most among all players in the postseason, only behind Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Just think about that. The guy didn't even get to the finals, and he was still number three in total scoring. Jamal's bucket getting in that postseason came on a ridiculous shooting split of 51-45-90. The Nuggets getting back an all-star caliber creator in the pick and roll could help get the mile high right back in the championship picture. You can't forget... Denver's also getting back their third leading scorer next year in the former number one ranked high school prospect Michael Porter Jr. So the reigning back-to-back -back MVP and Nikola Jokic should finally have all the pieces around him put in place by President Tim Connolly intact. Look for a massive bounce back season for Denver. Number eight, KD, Kyrie, and Simmons. Don't get me wrong, talent-wise, the Brooklyn Nets trio is debatably number one, but the reason I have them this low is because continuity-wise, this is barely a big three. A day before Kyrie opted into his contract, he had this to say. Do you want to be a Brooklyn Nets still? <laughs> pass it, pass it, pass it to my left. What I'm about to say sounds like a joke, but isn't. Having said that, directly after Ben Simmons posted this picture to his Instagram story, Kevin Durant immediately requested a trade. So, if you're a peeved Nets, KD, or Kyrie stan, the fact that we have no idea whether or not this is going to be a trio by October is why they rank down at number 8. Number 7, Embiid, Harden, and Maxi. The 76ers were missing Joel Embiid for several games in the second round, but still took two straight playoff wins over Miami when he came back. That Heat team that Philadelphia beat twice is an imposing roster 1-15, through 15, as Dade County's squad was one Jimmy Butler jump shot away from the NBA Finals. Tyrese Maxey had a breakout 2022 playoff run, displaying his ruthless combination of electric speed and fundamental three-point shooting. In just his second season, Maxey improved his scoring from 8.5 points per game to 17.5 per night as a sophomore. Like a true star player, Maxey upped his production in the postseason 
by being the 76ers' second leading scorer and averaging over 20. Everyone talks about the Embiid duo, but Tyrese is just as important as anyone the Sixers have outside of Joel Embiid. Number 6, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. The CP3 and D-Book combo was just an honorable mention for my duo ranking, which a lot of you weren't happy with, rightfully, but generally, I think the value of a top 3 center in this league, DeAndre Ayton, goes completely overlooked. Ayton's quite possibly the best screen setter in basketball, with his consistently solid positioning, and of course, 6'11", 250 pound frame. The former number 1 pick has also developed into one of the most polished post finishers, as DA's got the ability to drop step after backing his man down. Dominating signs an offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers, but given he was only a restricted free agent and not unrestricted, that allowed the Suns to match the four-year $133 million deal and bring DeAndre back to Arizona. I think everyone can agree that Aiton getting the bag was long overdue. Number 5, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart. The Celtics' 1-2 punch was at the top of my duos ranking, and Marcus Smart's an extremely stable pressure release for the Celtics' two superstars. The Defensive Player of the Year in Smart did get obliterated by Stephen Curry in the finals, but Steph torched everyone, to be fair. Marcus is the backbone to the Celtics' culture. Despite making his fair share of mistakes, he's an underrated offensive player, but the addition of Malcolm Brogdon should help Marcus, as well as the Jays keep their turnover numbers in check, but considering the C's got two wins from the title with all the sloppy plays they made, if they shore that up, title number 18 could be a thing before you know it, but I'm not going to jinx it again. Number 4, LeBron, Russ, and AD. Russell Westbrook is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and all the hate he's gotten has likely made you forget about that. Sure, he was memed constantly on Twitter and Instagram for his extensive amount of shots off the side of the backboard, and Skip Bayless got everyone calling him Westbrook, but Russ is the most athletic point guard in league history. He's been abandoned by two consecutive superstars in Kevin Durant and Paul George, which may give him some trust issues with guys like LeBron and AD, but I expect Brody to have a massive bounce back campaign for the Lakers in 2023 under a coach who believes in him no matter what in Darwin Ham. but what's ultimately going to be the driving factor making or breaking the 2022-23 Lakers is the health of Anthony Davis. King James is damn near 40 years old playing like a top superstar. At 29 in the prime of his career, Davis better be ready to bounce back. 2020's NBA champions had a miserable year in 21-22, but all you can do if you're a Laker fan is pray to the basketball gods that the continuity and health of James, Davis, and Westbrook takes a massive jump in the upcoming season. Number 3, Kawhi, PG, and Wall. John Wall may not have played last year with a bad hamstring, but don't forget how Klay Thompson bounced back for the dubs after missing two straight seasons. Players' recoveries nowadays are different with modern technology. Kawhi Leonard's fully healthy after tearing his ACL, and while it's somewhat concerning that those two may not reach their full form again, the upside for this Clippers team is the organization being in legit striking distance for a title. John Wall's highlights as a Rocket in 2021 prove that the now 31-year-old recently had a lot left in the tank. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George give John Wall two of the best players he's ever played next to. John's aggressiveness and underrated passing torched my Raptors when he was in his prime. Wall's a potential Hall of Fame player in the making who's going to take a ton of pressure off Kawhi and PG. Number 2, Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday. Needless to say, the 2021 NBA champions from Cream City will be out for some sweet revenge with Chris Cash Money Middleton making his long-awaited return. Chris was missing during the Bucks' playoff run this year, but the Bucks still got one win away from beating the eventual Eastern Conference champions. That was without their second option, who's crucial to this team. Milwaukee's trio has an overpowering inside-and-out combination featuring the greatest slasher of all time, Giannis Adetokounmpo, the best guard defender in basketball, Drew Holiday, and the Batman in the eyes of Kendrick Perkins, Chris Middleton. Before number one, the honorable mentions go to the ATL's trio of Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and John Collins, Chi-Town's big three of DeRozan, Levine, and Vucevic, Sacktown's first three options of De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, and Kevin Herter. I expect Kevin Herter to have a breakout season, so look for the Kings to surprise a lot of people by competing for a spot in the 2023 play-in. Lastly, since Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be out for Memphis, I left out he, John Morant, and Desmond Bain. But number one is Steph, Clay, and Dre. 
The Golden State Warriors have been this channel's main topic of discussion over the past year, and rightfully so. They just won their first title in four seasons. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green have the most titles by a trio over the last 50 years, which speaks for itself. Whether it's the iconic night-night celebration of Steph, the Draymond Green show, or Klay Thompson's antics at the parade, these four-time champions have every right to let the world know they're at the top, whether we like it or not. Klay Thompson came back after not playing for 941 days to rank second in playoff three-pointers made, while averaging 20.4 points per game in the Dubs' title run. Hated on because of his lack of offense, debatably the greatest backside pick-and-roll defender of all time in the Michigan State product Draymond Green, is crucial to the Dubs' dynasty as well. In my opinion, Green doesn't get enough respect. Two shoutouts next video, but does John Wall bounce back in 2022-23, or does the fact that he's played less games than Dirk Nowitzki since 2017-18 catch up to him? I think he's capable of making a return, but I want to know your take.